A short while ago I bought this um, Axminster mill. Uh, nice mill, very nice, I must admit, I'm very pleased with it. Um, a wee bit expensive, but um, when you consider they come with a three year fully uh, collect and return warranty, uh, which is pretty unusual, but even more unusual, it's, um, it's transferable. So if you sell it, it the warranty transfers to the new owner. Anyway, that's. Um, that's by the by. It's a very nice mill and shortly after I got it I thought, you know, I'd quite like to get a power feed for it so that the, you know, it moved the table. And I nearly fell off my chair when I found out that they wanted five hundred pounds for a power feed. So well, sorry, I'll build it myself. Uh, which is what I did. Um, I made it uh, using a, an Arduino and a stepper motor. And uh, it's it goes backwards and forwards as you'd expect, uh, fast feed and slow feed, which is adjustable. Okay, so for, for taking cuts, I can dial in a particular speed and it will go slow. And um, I was quite happy, it's still a work in progress, but my son Matt suggested that other people might be interested in, in this, uh, do it for themselves. So it's a bit too late to show you how I built the thing, but. I thought what I can do is I can show you the um, the construction of it and talk through how uh, it was constructed and the bits and bobs that um, I had to decide to do and you know this that and the other. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put this video together and um, along with a code for the Arduino etc. So anybody else that wants to build it can. Um, well, basically it saves you a lot of the trial and error that I have to go through to to sort it out. So, we'll make a start. I'll just move the camera and we'll have a look. Okay, so this is the housing for the stepper motor and this is the controller box. Uh, the housing is just a piece of um, pressed steel bent to shape to keep the um, chips out. Uh, it's nothing spectacular there. So, what we have here um, is the stepper motor and the plates that uh, hold the stepper motor in position. Nothing special about it. There's only a couple of things that are really important. This design is one of many, but the important things are this coupling you know, down in here. Um, that couples the shaft of the stepper motor to the table worm screw. If you look in the end of the um, the table, you'll see what there is is what looks like a screwdriver slot. So the other end of the the crank handle ends up in what looks like a screwdriver slot. So I made this coupling here, which is a, just a piece of aluminium, which has been drilled to take the um, the spindle of the stepper motor, and at the end of it, I machined what looks like a screwdriver blade that goes into the slot. Now. Uh, it's very important that that is machined very very precisely. The spindle hole needs to be concentric with the centre of the screwdriver slot effectively. I'm calling it a screwdriver slot, I'm sure you know what I mean. The, um, the blade that sticks out. If not, when it rotates it will become eccentric and it will bind. So that's the first thing, that needs to be well machined. And what I did is I left it just a little bit short on either end so there's no chance of it rubbing up against the edges and just a thou thinner than the actual slot which does give you a little bit of backlash absolutely but it's better than it binding and causing problems okay the other thing are these spacers now i milled all four of these spacers these standoffs together because they've got to be exactly right they're, otherwise if they're not then this plate here is going to twist slightly which once again will put the stepper motor at an angle and it will bind and you'll notice that the table runs it will it will judder or it will not be smooth the rest of this okay you could get away with just this you don't need this the reason I have three plates is that when I ordered the stepper motor um, I wasn't paying attention and it came with a spindle at the rear as well didn't want it but I could have sawn it off and oh well I'll leave it on in case I'm change my mind this and the other. This stepper motor is way overpowered. 
the the table in the in this direction the x direction doesn't require a tremendous amount of power actually even on taking a, a heavy cut this motor is way overpowered so at some point I may move this and use it for the for the Z feed for the up and down anyway um, this back plate holds the stepper motor against here and it also helps to take the heat out of the motor uh, I'll be honest with you there isn't much I mean I've run this quite hard and the motor still cool uh, and as I say this bit here is just to to step it away so I don't even see there's a spindle in there the back spindle and to give me something to to mount the case to okay so as you can see not a tremendous amount there okay it's fairly straightforward um, the stepper motor and the controllers and the power supply it came to less than a hundred pounds so um, it's a very cheap alternative so what we'll do now is we'll have a look at the controller pack I'll just move the camera okay now I could have um, made my own stepper motor driver system the ones for the Arduino are well documented you can find hundreds of them but I thought yeah what the hell why reinvent the wheel when it's already been reinvented for you so I bought one of these which is an M542T which excuse me controls the uh, stepper motor and this is a power supply 24 volt power supply which provides the power for this and the stepper motor this unit here um, it requires three inputs um, a step um, a direction and then an enable every time the step pulse is triggered uh, it will move the stepper motor on one step and the number of steps on a full revolution are controlled by a switch in the side here a switch array and here is the table which gives you the settings for how many steps in a full revolution and it goes from 400 all the way up to 52,000 near enough so you could have 52,000 pulses to turn it one step which you can imagine uh, it does the table does two millimeters for one revolution so <laughs> that is a very 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 small amount of movement so most of my time was spent tuning this because obviously if it requires 52,000 steps for a full revolution or when you want to do a fast traverse um, you're going to end up stepping sending so many pulses um, you exceed the upper frequency for this device so it, it has a maximum number I think it's 100 kilohertz uh, frequency which is the maximum for this the direction obviously uh, one if it's high it step it di the direction of rotation is clockwise if it's low it's anti-clockwise or vice versa you get the idea then we have an enable and the enable uh, will turn this unit on or off um, when it's turned on obviously it will step and move uh, when it's off one of the things that is very useful when it's off uh, it will uh, drop the current to the stepper motor normally if the if you stop it stepping it will go into a latched mode where the motor is held um, this is obviously to prevent it moving under under load or anything but mm, when you're not doing anything you don't want that to happen uh, so you can use the enable to turn off the stepper motor so they're not uh, sitting there drawing current and obviously heating and everything um, the two the um, second uh, bank of, of uh, connectors here is the power in from this controller and the two sets of the two pairs of um, cables going to the the stepper motor itself the A and the B phases and um, that's basically all it takes uh, very very simple very straightforward so we'll have a look now at the control box okay this is the control box it has as you can see uh, five buttons and a knob the fast traverse left fast traverse right slow traverse left slow traverse right and a stop button which at the moment isn't used uh, because the buttons are as you hold it down it traverses you let go it stops I didn't want to I mean you could have it so that you press it to traverse and press that to stop but um, for safety's sake at the moment um, I'm figuring that uh, I don't want my attention diverted and it traveling to the far end until I've got the safety stops in okay and then we have a control knob here which is just a rotary knob which allows me to select uh, different feed rates so you can set it so I'm hoping that's in focus you can see 
So that's how many millimeters per second the table will move. Um, let's reset it. So it starts off at about one millimeter per second, uh, which I found is a reasonably good compromise. That's purely for, for the cutting. Um, the traverse is fixed. It's fixed at, um, I think it's about seven millimeters per second, the traverse. Um, but basically that's it. So inside here, what we've got, uh, if I take the lid off, okay, and at the moment it's a bit of a mess because, as I say, it is a work in progress. What we have is an Arduino and a um, display board. The Arduino um, controls the system. Uh, you can get away without the display board if you just want fast, f fast forward, fast rewind if you like and play and reverse. Um, if you don't want to display you can do away with that altogether. Um, the input voltages uh, from that the box are 24 volts which is a tad too high for an Arduino uh, so I'm stepping it down to, to 12 volts here. Uh, it's a bit messy at the moment but this is because I'm still fiddling around with it. Um, I have another input to put in which it will be the um, which is to be the stop switch. There'll be a limit switch, which is going to be a read relay mounted on this side and with a magnet actually on the table. So as the table traverses to a limit, the magnet hits the read relay and it will send a pulse to stop the thing. So that's something for future use. Also, with the menu, I'm going to add the functions whereby I can, I can pre-program a movement so if I want to mill a 16mm slot, I'll be able to dial in 16mm, press the button and it will do it. Okay, but that's all for future stuff. At the moment, it's very usable. Um, I use it just literally for traversing the table, um, for fast traverses, to save me cranking, basically, and um, for nice, smooth um, cuts. I used it uh, with, the, um, with this um, face mill. And the difference was actually quite staggering um, when I used the face mill. Uh, see if I can get into focus. Uh, when I used that previously, it was good, but it wasn't brilliant. When I used it with the um, the slow feed, uh, the difference was amazing. It was so much better, uh, very clean, very smooth, because there were no differences in the feed rate, which is. No matter how well you try to do it, you're always going to get slight variations. So, at, at the moment, it's still working really, really well uh, without any of my enhancements. Okay, so, uh, I've waffled long enough. Um, basically, I'm going to put this up onto YouTube, and I'll put the code for the Arduino up, and also, you know, the parts that I used, so other people, if they want to do it, they can do the same thing. And um, hopefully it will save other people, you know, the messing about. Mind you, that was part of the fun, so whatever. <laughs> Enjoy.